good Tuesday morning. This is 106.1 KYVZ. Joe Bezurek back on the phone with meteorologist Chris Schramick at Decision Weather Now, as well as America's Weather Streaming Channel. Chris, a hot one yesterday. Well, actually, it's already kind of warm out there this morning. Yeah, Joe, we saw temperatures climb up there into the hundreds and came very close to setting some records. Uh, we'll have to look at some of those locations to the eastern zones. We had some 106s, some 107s, which would be very close over there in that uh, Norton County and up to the east a little bit. We also saw some downpours and heavy rain yesterday evening that fell in Norton County, Graham County, moved down there through Gove County. That is exiting here this morning, and then that'll set us up for another day of triple-digit heat and heat indexes up there into the hundreds. So we do have a heat advisory again today. It's a little bit further to the east from Norton County through Graham County down to the interstate. Um, so we'll see heat indexes over there getting up there that 105 up there, you know, above that, that 110, while we'll be in the low 100s here uh, in, in the tri-state area. We're starting out there this morning with some cooler temperatures on the Colorado side that are in the 60s. We'll go 62 in Lyman, 63 in Burlington. You get across the border in Kansas, and like you said, it's pretty warm. We got 73 in Goodland, 74 in Colby, 67 in Oberlin, and 68 in McCook. We got a southwesterly wind that is starting to veer and turn to the southeast. Today, we'll see temperatures again climb up there into the low 100s with those uh, winds turning to a northerly direction. Uh, this afternoon at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Tonight's lows will be in those mid to upper 60s. We could see some scattered isolated thunderstorms south and east of the line from McCook to Leota once again, and those will be similar where they could have the downpours and those microburst type winds where you could have a big gust of 40, 50, maybe even a 60 mile an hour wind gusts or higher. Uh, then we'll head into tomorrow. Good news is we're going to have a little bit of reprieve from the heat. We're going to be down into the middle 90s, low 90s for highs tomorrow as a cool front starts to sag through. And that high pressure retrogrades and goes to the south over Texas. That'll allow systems to come from a trough in the northwestern U.S., across the Rockies, and through tomorrow evening. And then it looks like we'll have another system Thursday evening and then yet another one on Friday. So we're looking at three days of systems coming from the west over the Rockies with the potential for some heavy rainfall, maybe even a little bit of large hail or wind gusts that will trigger a few thunderstorm warnings there towards the evening hours. Um, that is something that will change the weather for those three days. We should see, uh, again, a high tomorrow in the 90s, maybe only in the 80s on Thursday with more clouds, and then back into the 90s on Friday. That will have a cool front sleeping through on Friday evening. It will lead to an 80-degree day on Saturday. However, high pressure will build back in, and by Sunday, we're in the 90s. Monday, Tuesday, back into the 100s. Southwesterly winds picking up again, drying things out, probably finishing up any of that wheat that's even going to be cut. And then as we head to the 4th of July, another system in front sag in, and we could have some pretty decent weather for the 4th of July in the upper 80s and lower 90s. That's Ag Meteorologist Chris Schramick at Decision Weather Now, as well as America's Weather Streaming Channel for 106.1 KYVZ. I'm Joe Vizurek.